much. Now, let's bring in former attorney for Sean Combs, Mark Garagos, and former FBI agent Stuart Kaplan. Uh, it's good to have you both, gentlemen. Uh, Stu, uh, you're sending subpoenas to his cell phone company, the people who gives him the jet, uh, some commercial airlines that he's been on. Uh, what is this about capturing? And why did it come after the raid, not before it? Well, so to your latter point is there was an investigative assessment clearly that realized that the issuance of these grand jury subpoenas would not be kept confidential. They were concerned about them being leaked and that the target of their investigation would then be able to utilize that information to perhaps delete or destroy or remove evidence. And so it was the proper call, especially when you have a high-profile individual entertainer like this. And so that's why, in the normal course, after a search warrant, now that the world knows that he's the target of a criminal investigation, it would make more sense. Mm. I accept Stu's explanation as plausible, but Mark, you know, I, I've been learning at your lap for decades, and usually the big raid is like the finale of when they're going in hot and heavy. Here, it didn't go that way. Do you think it's just um, subjective choice by this particular investigative team, or does it raise questions for you? No, it raises questions. I think clearly um, your guest is right that they don't want to tip off that they're going in, and that's why normally I see it, often see it, that they'll issue the subpoenas right as they're executing the search warrant almost simultaneously, especially when you have this kind of a presence. The thing that uh, I've been highlighting about this is this seems awfully quick for a federal investigation. It's almost warp speed. Um, and I do want to comment, even though it was on your, uh, your cry on down, down below, when you were talking about 50 Cent's ex, she came out today and she specifically denied that, uh, that any of this was true. And I think that also goes to your other guest who was talking about, you know, you can bury these things in there and they just become kind of urban legend almost immediately. And so I think that uh, some of these claims already are demonstrably false. And I think that if the feds are using one or both of these lawsuits as kind of a roadmap, I think mm. that they're running those to ground and they're finding out quickly a lot of this stuff may, may not be true. What's the chance, Stu, that the feds could get misled because of all this intrigue within the hip-hop world and these civil suits that seem to be a trail of breadcrumbs, uh, but really uh, they're more about money than truth? Well, I know from my own experience, Chris, and to Mark's point, it's not unusual that there's a civil suit that comes to the attention of law enforcement. And just as Mark said, it may be used as a roadmap. But Mark would, I would imagine, uh, would agree with me that notwithstanding these complaints, meaning these civil lawsuits that uh, were published many, many months ago, in order to convince a sitting magistrate to issue a search warrant based upon in a fine who swears out that there is probable cause to believe that the fruits of some criminal enterprise or some crime may be found in someone's house. Uh, you have to have credible, ripe information. That means that there's got to be some fresh information, usually the courts require within 30 days, that something new, something that has been corroborated. Right. It, it would be impossible that the magistrate, the judge who signed off on this search warrant, would have just had the information contained in a civil court complaint. There's something more that came to light. It's probably an informant or an, a victim. Right. And that is why you're seeing, as Mark said, warp speed with respect to them moving quickly on this. Well, I hope they do quick go quickly. I know the expression that, you know, justice delayed is justice denied, but also haste makes waste, right? Two things can be true at once. But I will tell you, and I say the same thing about the mayor of New York City, Adams. When you make a big show like this in public, you wreck people. You wreck their reputation. And I really do believe there should be something quickly in the form of confirming why this person's reputation was trashed the way it was. Because, too, as we both know, the media uh, wasn't a secret what they were doing at Diddy's Homes, right? They were well positioned for it, so somebody had told them. So let's see what happens next. And I can tell you, Garagos is not a huge fan of the standard you need to get a search warrant. But your points are well received, and we'll continue the conversation when we learn more. Stuart Kaplan, appreciate you stepping in. Mark Garagos, as always, appreciate you. 
Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.